안녕하세요. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Eiji. Uh, I'm a developer advocate at Google working on the web. And uh, I hope, I wish I could speak in Korean, but unfortunately, I can't. So let me speak in English. Um, so today, I'm going to talk about uh, enabling frictionless signing on the web. I will cover mainly about the uh, signing on the web, but I also cover some stuff on the native apps as well. So let's get started. Last year, my wife got an email from uh, a large messenger service saying that my wife's uh, account has been logged in by a suspic suspicious activity from an, an unusual location. Because my wife hasn't used that service for uh, many years, so it turned out quickly that it's been compromised. So after a few interactions with their support team, uh, she gave her a birthday and so on. She somehow proved that the uh, position of their account. Uh, so things are you know, fine. It, it, there was no significant problem. But how could that happen? Why was my wife's account being uh, compromised? My wife actually confessed that she was using the same password across multiple different websites. And I thought that is a, a reason. For example, one poorly implemented website leaked uh, my wife's password to an attacker. Then attacker tried the same password to multiple different websites. And they happened to hit the, uh, the large messenger service. And they have somehow successfully signed into my wife's account. Um, so this is called a list attack. And it's well-known uh, way of hacking uh, someone's account. And uh, it's not unusual. So it's very common uh, way of attacking. Then how could she you know, uh, avoid that situation? What should my wife do not to happen that uh, uh, happen again in the future? Obviously, she could, use, she could have used a strong credential, strong password. What is strong password? By strong, I mean using different passwords per website. That's for sure, right? And also, the password should be long enough and complex enough. Complex, I mean using alphabet, uh, numbers, numerics, and symbols, for example. So by making password uh, unique and complex, her account should have been, uh, you know, not been hacked. But can you imagine remembering all the unique and complex password by yourself in memory? Can you do that? I don't think I can do that myself. That's why people use something called password managers. The figure you are seeing here, I, I'm using a website called illustria.com. And I was looking for a good image for a password manager, but I somehow ended up using a term manager. So this is a typical manager figure in Japan. I, I don't know if you understand this joke, but anyway, I consider this is a password manager. And uh, yeah, password manager is a great tool. And uh, usually, uh, most of browsers, uh, modern browsers, have that password manager feature. Along with autofill feature, you will have no brainer to sign into a website, right? Autofill fills in the sign-in ID and the password automatically so that you can just tap on login button to get a sign in. But what about native apps? When you want to uh, share the same account between website and the native app, and you want to sign in using the same account on a native app, you would have to copy ID and password from a, a browser to the native app to sign in. That's why standalone password manager software makes sense, and it's still popular. It provides various options to launch uh, the app, and you can look for the uh, matching ID and password combination, and you can copy that to your nat native app or website. So I think that uh, a lot of tech savvies are using that kind of uh, password managers. But the challenge here, 
is that I don't think my wife can use it, right? Do you think that your kid can use it? Your parents can use it? I don't think so. It's, you know, quite convenient, but it's hard for many of users to use it. And, uh, but I, I still can say that using password manager is still critical for many users in order to keep their credentials strong, right? But what if it could be possible to uh, make password not necessary, right? That is the best solution. Users don't have to remember any of password. That is the best solution. So by using federated login, users can sign in your, to your, your website without using password. Federated login here means that using third-party identity, such as Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Yahoo, or whatever, your favorite identity provider to uh, take care of identity part so that you can go to the, um, those kind of identity provider websites, sign in, and come back to get into your, uh, the website. And there are there's standard protocols called OpenID Connect or OAuth. By using federated logins, users don't need to remember yet another password. Good news is that uh, this also helps developers. By using such solutions, developers can provide, uh, users can defer many parts of security matters to those identity providers. Building a security, a secure authentication is quite tough, and uh, a professional work is required. So you can defer all those uh, things to identity providers. In summary, the goal to achieve a good signing user experience is to have following things. One is to st enable strong password, strong credentials. Second is to have assistance by password manager. And third is to provide uh, sophisticated, sophisticated user experience. I think these three are the keys for good user experience when users are signing in. And that's what we are working at Google. And one of our early steps to this effort is called Smart Lock for Password. We've announced this in, uh, two years ago at Google I.O. But Smart Lock for Password is a feature for Android native apps to be able to handle credentials on behalf of user. By using it, you can have good control over credentials to, uh, so you can let users sign in through a sophisticated user experience. It uses Google Chrome's password manager, so you can share a same, uh, same password between native app and the website. Uh, if you store a password on Android native app, it will be shared to your website. And you store a credential to a website, it will be available to a native app as well. And by using smart lock for password, you can let users sign in automatically. Uh, that's great experience. So usually users would have to copy and paste ID and password, but you will, uh, users will not have to do that uh, anymore. This feature is already used in many different apps. Namely, uh, as you can see on the screen, the Netflix, Netflix is a pretty famous service. I think it is available in Korea as well. But if you have a chance, please try it and experience how seamlessly you can sign into the service without worrying about ID and password combination. And the web version of Smart Lock for Password is called Credential Management API. And this is the biggest topic that I'm going to talk about today. The Credential Management API is a future web standard. It's currently implemented in Chrome, but is coming to Firefox and Safari in the future. I would call this a web version of Smart Lock for Password. It basically allows you to control credentials using JavaScript on behalf of the user. Let's have a closer look in how it works. There are roughly three benefits. One thing is one-tap sign-in. 
by showing an account to the dialog, users can sign in just by selecting one of the accounts. So the accounts being the uh, credential information that users has used to sign in in the past. This provides, uh, this provides a sophisticated user experience without even thinking about uh, using password, right? Secondly, it enables auto sign in. If there are multiple accounts stored to the um, website, you would um, account user dialog makes sense. It helps. But what if there's only one? There's no, no meaning to have like account chooser. So let's just let the user sign in automatically. Right? But of course, if the user signs out, it's a good indication that the user wants to keep signed out. So you can turn off out sign in in that case. And third benefit is to remember to be able to remember predated logins. Usually, password managers can only store ID and password. But by using Credential Management API, you can let it rem remember which account the user has used to sign in for uh, identity pro uh, federated logins. The good news is that you can list such accounts as part of the list that I have showed earlier. Let me show you. So this is a previous slide, but it's showing account list. Um, it's not how many. OK, somehow it's not animating anymore. But anyway, um, account list will show both ID and password combination, as well as a federated login. So you can, uh, users can seamlessly sign in by tapping on the favorite, their favorite account to sign in. We are seeing many websites implementing this uh, credential management API to their PWAs. For example, Flipkart, an Indian top e-commerce service, launched its credential management API support this year. Another example is Wego. A successful travel startup in Singapore has also launched their implementation recently. AliExpress from China has launched their integration a while ago. And they proved that higher engagement with this API is not just in theory. They have achieved 41% more signing users by using the Credential Management API. Additionally, they decreased the signing failure rate by 85%. So more people are successfully signing in. And it's increased the conversion rate by 11%. That's incredible. Now, let me take a closer look into how it works. To obtain a credential, just call Navigator Credentials Get. If there's only one credential, it will return credential immediately. Otherwise, uh, if, you, if it has more than two, it will show an account chooser dialog so that wait for user to tap on one of the accounts, and then it returns a credential. If we want to let user sign in, just continue with that uh, credential information and post that information to the server. By adding mediation silent to this call, you can use this for auth sign ins Because this call doesn't show an account chooser uh, and returns a cred credential only if there's only one credential stored. So it's suitable to be called when you, you want to enable auth sign in When a user explicitly signs out, uh, signs out of your website, you should turn off auth sign in You can do that by calling uh, prevent silent access. This way, Credential Management API will stop returning a credential without user's explicit action. And it can only be turned back on by user selecting an account from the account chooser. You can, of course, store new credentials or update existing ones. A form would trigger a prompt to store the credential even without using the API. But with the API, you can have more precise control. It sometimes happens that the uh, browser stores wrong field as an ID, or sometimes tries to store information 
uh, even when send in is failed, when you are using forms. But uh, you can use uh, more precise control by using this API. By annotating a sign-in form well and give that to a call, navigator credentials dot store, uh, you can provide precise information to the password manager. To store a credential information, uh, to store a federated login information, you are not storing things like ID token for OpenID Connect or OAuth uh, access token for OAuth, but you store information about identity provider and uh, ID for the account. One important uh, recent update is sharing credentials across multiple domains. Access to credentials in Credential Management API has been strictly restricted, restricted to the same origin. But now, it's possible to share a credential uh, between multiple subdomains in Chrome without any additional implementations. This is helpful when uh, a website subdomain is different between desktop version and mobile version, right? And it will be also possible to share a credential across multiple top-level domains. When I was talking about smart lock or password, I said you can share a credential between Android native app and the website. And the website can be multiple domains. But unfortunately, because of the restriction that Credential Management API provides, uh, it's not, it has not been possible to share uh, credential between those domains. We are working on it. And hopefully, Chrome 62 will have this feature enabled. Uh, this is necessary integration when you want to run an old sign in uh, of, and obtain a credential from the origin you let user sign name. Uh, I think that typically large companies' single sign on solution might ex appreciate this. But um, this is coming to Chrome, 62, six, Chrome 62. And how it works. So for subdomains, you didn't have to do anything. But for entirely different domains, you will have to have something called digital asset links. By putting a JSON file at the path of well-known asset links.json, you can provide information which origin is being connected to which origin. You have been using this for uh, sharing credential between native app and a website. But this can be also used for website to website. That way, the same credential information will be shared to other domains. OK, so that's the Credential Management API. To learn more about it, we have documentations. Please visit g.co slash Credential Management API. So far, I have covered Credential Management API and Smart Lock for Password you should have found that these features address two out of three uh, requirements for a good authentication, a password manager and sophisticated user experience. But what about strong credential? It still leaves that part. That's why we are working on a new API called SignUp API. Luckily, we already have such feature in Smart Lock for Password for uh, native apps, which is called Hint Selector. A service called Hotel Tonight is already using it. As you can see in the animation, it's showing a similar account list as for sign-ins. Um, but this is uh, actually for sign-up. The difference is that the list represents accounts that the user has used in the past in the same profile by the user signing, uh, tapping on one of the accounts, that indicates the user wants to sign up with that identity so that the service lets the user sign up through that account. Once the identity is determined, the rest is taken care of by the service. If the email address indicates a Google account, which namely is gmail.com, the feature 
automatically runs OpenID Connect against Google. Upon successful authentication, you will receive an ID token. ID token is an equivalent to a password, so it's a very strong credential. But it can also do a lot more than that. It contains information about the user. For example, user's name, email address, or a profile picture's URL. It also proves that the email address which user owns is already verified by Google. So you wouldn't have to verify that again by yourself. By using the hint selector, Hotel Tonight got 23% higher, 23 higher conversion rate. Also, 65% of account creation turned out to be through Smart Lock for Password. And we are working on it, working on the similar feature for the web. Uh, we are prototyping it uh, using JavaScript for now. But eventually, we will standardize it for the web. OK, now we have uh, covered strong credential, password manager, and sophisticated user experience. All requirements we think is needed are covered. But there's one more thing that we are missing. Do you know what it is? What it is? It's openness. I also couldn't find a good illustration for openness, so I just tried to use uh, open car. That's meaning openness. So because smart lock for password only allows Google properties as a storage for credentials. But in the ideal world, it should be pos possible to store credential in third-party credential uh, storage, like password managers, right? You want to have a um, choice of password manager. That's why we are working on a project called Open YOLO. YOLO stands for You Only Log In Once. And it's a code name for Smart Lock for Password at Google internally. So Open YOLO is an open and standard version of Smart Lock for Password. It's for everyone. Google and OpenID Foundation are working with multiple uh, password manager vendors to allow them to be a storage for Smart Lock for Password. So users will have a choice. We are working on it uh, for uh, native apps for now. But in the future, we are hoping to we can uh, expand it to other platforms as well. I'm looking forward to see you. Uh, in, we will enjoy the openness of sign-in experience uh, soon. And that's all I have. Thank you for listening.